Hi everybody, it's Rebecca Virginia, and today I'm going to show you how to do three modern farmhouse DIYs. The first DIY in this video is a chicken wire floral frame. Here's everything that you'll need to make this on your own. I'm starting off this DIY using one of my favorite frames from the Dollar Tree. I think I've used like four of these in DIYs. They're so beautiful. It's this gorgeous faux wood. If you see these frames, definitely pick them up because they are perfect for DIYs. I love the wood texture because no matter what paint color you put on top, that texture still shows through. And for this particular DIY, I'm going to be taking a fairly light gray color and I'm going over the frame two times. I don't want it to be a really thick heavy coat, but I do want it to be covered. And as you can see, that faux wood texture is still peeking through. To hang the flowers on this DIY, I'm taking this glass bottle and painting it with some white chalk paint. I mentioned this in last week's DIY where I made a faux milk jug, but these glass bottles are actually iced coffee bottles that you could buy at the Dollar Tree. Not only is the iced coffee really delicious, but I absolutely love the shape of them and they are great to use in all DIYs. And of course, it wouldn't be a farmhouse DIY video of mine if I didn't dirty up this beautifully painted glass jar that I just did. I love adding in a little bit of brown paint to just distress things. I think it adds a farmhouse touch and makes everything not look so brand new. So I'm just taking a dry brush and a little bit of brown paint and just going over this jar. I was so excited to see this chicken wire at my Dollar Tree. I've seen lots of other YouTubers and DIYers find it at their Dollar Tree, but this was the first time I had seen it at mine. And I will say, if you have some gloves, you might want to put them on because this chicken wire was kind of tough and painful on the hands. It definitely pokes you. So props out there to anyone who has chickens or uses chicken wire because this stuff is not soft. And all I did was unroll it and it came out in a long sheet. Again, this stuff was a little bit challenging at first to work with. When I unrolled it, it just wanted to pop back up in its rolled form. So I did take two of my large books. So we got Dracula and Great Expectations over there. And I just placed them on top of the chicken wire and left them for about 30 minutes because I wanted the chicken wire to be a little bit easier to work with and not keep popping up on me. The books did help to make it not pop up so much, but as you can see, when I lined up the chicken wire on top of the frame, I did put the two books down on the one end, and I'm using binder clips to keep the chicken wire in place. So I added hot glue, put the chicken wire in it, and then binder clipped it. And this was a little bit of a long process, but it was the only way that I could get the chicken wire to stay down with the hot glue. I'm sure if you had a staple gun, that would work too, but I don't have one, so hot glue it was. And I found that a little bit of a quicker process was just using the binder clip to keep down the chicken wire and then just going right over that with hot glue. Once the glue dried, I could easily get the binder clips off of the dried glue and the chicken wire and it sped things up a little bit. So I just placed on the binder clips and then went ham with the hot glue, just making sure that all the chicken wire was down in place and wasn't going to pop up on me. To cut the chicken wire, this is a little tip I got from my friend Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs, and she recommended these nail trimmers for dogs that are found at the Dollar Tree, and they work amazing. They cut through everything, wood dowels, chicken wire. This is just a really great $1 tool to have. And now you're just going to continue putting down the binder clips and hot gluing the chicken wire down to the frame. I know that the Dollar Tree Crafter Square section has some of those clamps that you can get, that would also work, or you know, you could just use binder clips like me. Pretty sure I have those clamps somewhere around my craft bin, but I couldn't find them at this moment, so the binder clips came in handy. Once I had all three sides of the chicken wire glued down to the frame, I used those dog nail trimmers to trim off the excess bit of chicken wire and then continued the exact same process using the hot glue and the binder clips to adhere the last side of the chicken wire to my frame. Then I set aside the chicken wire frame and began to work on the glass bottle. I started off on the bottle by taking some jute and wrapping it all the way around the top of our glass bottle. I did this one because I think it adds a really cute farmhouse touch to the glass bottle and two because this is going to help us when we are placing the bottle onto the chicken wire frame. 
So to get the bottle onto the chicken wire, I am taking a longer piece of jute and I am wrapping it around the bottom section of the neck of our glass jar and then I just tied a knot to secure that in place. After I've placed the knot behind the neck of the glass bottle, I went ahead and placed it on top of the chicken wire frame and figured out exactly where I wanted it placed. Then I put the little jute strands through the chicken wire so that I knew exactly where I wanted to tie it. Now here is where I ran into a little bit of a problem because when I flipped the frame over to tie the bottle into place, I realized that this chicken wire was super sharp and if I didn't do something when I hung this up, it was going to scratch the paint off of my walls pretty quickly. I trimmed down the chicken wire as best as I could, but it was still really pokey, really sharp, and I didn't want to ruin my walls, especially since I rent. So I just went over all those little pokey sharp points with a glue gun and it kind of created this barrier between the sharp chicken wire and my wall. So this worked really well. You could also put down some felt fabric over top of it, but the easiest way was to just go over it with some hot glue. A little trick that I do for a frame, if it doesn't have a holder or anything on the back of it, like this one didn't, is I take a soda can tag or a seltzer water tag, if you will, and I just hot glue that to the back and that acts as the perfect holder for our picture frame. Also, if you're wondering what that little black tag is, it's actually a pipe cleaner and I use that to hold the place of where I wanted the bottle to be when I had turned it over and realized I had to go over everything with hot glue. After securing the bottle to the chicken wire frame using the jute and just a simple knot, I added some florals as an embellishment as well as a little jute bow to the front. I had so much fun creating this DIY and using chicken wire for the first time and I definitely plan to use it in some future DIYs. For our second DIY, I wanted to bring some greenery of spring to this snowy landscape. Here's how you can make these three herb jars on your own. So like almost everything in this video, this trio of glass jars are from the Dollar Tree. They actually came in a set of four, but I had used one of them for a different DIY, so I only had three for this one. And to start off this DIY, I took some white chalk paint and I went over the entirety of these glass jars. I ended up doing two coats because I wanted a pretty opaque white color. For the labels on our jars, I found these gorgeous hand-drawn looking labels online. I will be sure to add a link down below so that you guys can print these out and use them on your own. And all that I did was print out these gorgeous images. There are all kinds of different herbs to choose from. I ended up using basil, thyme, and I think mint. Before adding any of the labels to the jars, I wanted the jars to have a distressed, almost galvanized tin look to them. So I took a dry brush and a bit of gray paint and just went all the way around the jars, creating these, I guess, lines all around them to distress them. To adhere the labels to the glass jars, I took a little bit of Mod Podge on my finger and just placed that on the back of the label and then very lightly went over the label with some more Mod Podge. And I just continued doing this with every single jar and label, adding a bit of Mod Podge on the back of the label and then also on top of it. When I placed the label on top of the glass jar, it was pretty obvious where the label was and where the jar was. So to make everything flow a little bit better, I did dry brushing with some gray paint over the label so it didn't look so obvious that I had just glued it on. Next, to seal everything in, I took a little bit of Mod Podge and just brushed it all over the jar so that the label wouldn't be coming off and I wouldn't have to worry about any chipping. I was loving how the jars were coming out so far, but I thought they looked a little too modern with the gray dry brushing. So to add an extra farmhouse feel, I took some jute and wrapped it around the top of the glass jars. I love adding jute to DIYs. It adds the perfect rustic and a little bit of a farmhouse touch to any project. So I wrapped this twice around the top of our glass jars, and then I couldn't resist adding a little jute bow to the front of them. It's still a little early for spring where I live, so to fake a spring effect, I added in some faux greenery to my trio of herb jars. The last modern farmhouse DIY is a candle holder made out of a tuna can. Here's what you need to create this DIY that looks great during the day and even better at night.
To start off this simple DIY, I'm taking this small glass jar that I got from the Dollar Tree in the set, and I'm painting it white with some chalk paint. While the glass jar was drying, I moved on to my tuna can. And yes, you heard that right. I am using a used tuna can in this DIY, but don't worry, I let it soak for a long time in some very soapy water and I cleaned it very thoroughly so there is no fishy smell to it. And if you are gonna use a tuna can in this DIY, please make sure to really clean it because you don't want your candle smelling. And similar to what I did with the glass jar, I'm just covering our tuna fish can in some of this white chalk paint. After our white paint has dried, that's going to serve as a base. And now I'm moving on to this faux galvanizing technique that kind of ends up looking like a concrete texture as well. And it's really easy to do. It just requires a couple of steps and a lot of repetition. But once you get the hang of it, even though it takes a little bit of time, it's really easy to do. I'm using a small piece of a kitchen sponge, but you could also use a small piece of a sponge paintbrush. You can find those at the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just taking some gray paint and in all sorts of different directions and different pressures, I am just sponging on that gray paint. And after I've sponged the gray paint onto the glass jar, I'm going to move on to the tuna can. You're not really gonna see the inside of the tuna can, so I'm just rubbing that with some of the gray paint but I am using that sponging technique all over the outside. Now to begin to really create that cool effect, I'm doing the exact same thing, but with black paint. So I'm using the sponge and going all over the glass jar with the black paint, again, using different pressures, different directions, and just going all over it. There's no real correct way to do this. The only thing that you want to avoid is going in the same direction or using the same pattern because you want it to look haphazard and all messy, you don't want it to be uniform. Next, I went in with another layer of the gray paint and now you can kind of understand what I meant when I said it's easy to do, it just takes a little bit of time because you're putting down a layer, waiting for it to dry, then putting down another. And I went over pretty heavy handedly with my last coat of gray paint. I only wanted a little bit of the black to show through, but again, you can tailor this to whatever your preference is. Once you have finished all of your painting, the real hard part is over, and now it's pretty easy from here. I just flipped the glass jar upside down, added some hot glue, and then glued down the tuna can jar on top of the glass jar. Then I grabbed one of these larger glass jars from the Dollar Tree, which fit perfectly inside of the tuna can. And last, it's time to add your candle. I loved this silver one that I found at the Dollar Tree. I thought it went perfectly with this DIY, but you could also just add in a tea light. And this candle holder concludes all of the modern farmhouse DIYs for this week. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.